So what would you think of one of these power banks that sold for four dollars? Yeah, I, you know, I thought the same thing too, but you know what? I bought one and I tore it down and uh, well, you're gonna see, it's actually quite impressive for what it is, for what it costs, I think this is a winner. So this is the four dollar USB mobile and tablet battery pack. It's a battery bank, came from Dollarama, four bucks. Four bucks is all this thing costs. Um, we're gonna crack this thing open and uh, take a look at what you get for four dollars. Packaging is probably worth four dollars. There we go. So what comes in the package? You get your battery pack and you get a micro USB to USB charger. And it says, do not use with wall chargers that exceed one amp. So I read into that that this thing probably doesn't have any uh, charge current limiting and they're relying on the ability of the charger to limit the current. So there it is from the top view. As you see, you've got a USB, micro USB charge input and a USB output. And the specifications, according to the manual on this, it's a lithium polymer battery, 1800 milliamp hours. You can charge it at one amp maximum and it has a one amp maximum output. So what we wanna see is, I wanna see how, what, what, this, what type of actual cell is in this thing. Is it a lithium, uh, is it a cylindrical cell or is it a, uh, is it a, one of those ones that if you puncture them, they're gonna break. Well, let's just pop it open and see. And un unlike others, this one actually opens up very easily. And as we can see, keep you guys in suspense. Ooh, suspense time. What do we got in here? I'm peeking. We have our cylindrical cell. So it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. We have our little charge circuit down here and we have our battery. And if I pop this out, I'm sure I can pry out the battery. We'll just see what this has got, if any, for any type of protection. And as we can see, it has, sort of. Looks like we've got some, let's see, we've got some LEDs down here. And we've got our, our buck converter to boost up our voltage. We've got our, our, our buck converter to reduce our voltage and we've got our boost converter to increase our voltage. Here's the coil on here. So we know we've got a, a DC to DC converter on here. What I'm curious is to what type of um, voltages that we get off this thing and uh, what kind of currents we can get off this unit here. So I just so happen that I've got a USB cord that I've kind of hacked here and we'll plug it in here and now I haven't charged this thing, so I should maybe test it first and see whether the battery is charged. So we'll just take a look at the, the, the base voltage of the battery itself and see whether the battery itself is actually charged. 3.8 volts. Well, it has a charge in it of some type. Looking at the cell here, I'm looking to see if there's any numbers on here. I don't see any, I don't see any numbers on this, so it's not a name brand cell which I wouldn't expect it to be for four dollars, right? I wouldn't expect this thing to uh, to uh, have name brand cells in it, but it should do the job. It should be a fine little charger to carry with you, you know, so if your cell phone goes dead, I mean, this thing's tiny. And it, 1800, what did I say it was? 1800 milliamps? Yeah, 1800 milliamps, that should give you enough power to charge your cell phone maybe not all the way on some of the new phones that have got like the 3500 milliamp or 4000 milliamp battery you're not going to get a full charge but it should give you enough of a charge that you can get your phone going and going long enough that you can uh, you know use your phone if you need to so um we're going to test this thing out i'm just 
going to load this down. Just gotta grab my little jig that I made up before. And we'll put this thing under load. So just over here on my bench, because it comes with a really short cord, I'll plug the USB charging cord in here. This is a three quarter amp Blackberry charger. The light turns red and it's flashing. We're gonna let this battery charge fully and then we're gonna put it on the current test and we'll see how well this thing discharges and what we can get out of this thing for capacity. So I'm gonna let this thing charge up for, it says to charge it, the instructions that I didn't read actually say charge it for two hours before using it. So it's obvious that the battery is not shipped in a fully start, charged state. Let's charge it and see what happens. I would like to be able to say that this is a pass and send people over to the dollar store to buy these for four bucks. And this is not, by the way, this is not a sponsored video. I wasn't given this unit. I saw this thing when I was going through the dollar store buying some uh, CR3032s for my uh, key fob for a buck 25 for three and sitting in the battery rack, they had these things for four bucks and I thought, yeah, I gotta try one of these things and see if it works. So unbiased, I, I bought this thing, let's see if it works. As you can see, the light flashes red when it's charging. We're just going to let it charge here for a little while. And I'm just going to check, test the voltage and see what our voltage is coming up to. It's been going now for a bit. 4.16 volts. So we'll let it complete its charge cycle. It's been going now for about an hour, uh, about an hour, 45 minutes. It should be charged in the next, I would say, 15 minutes to half an hour. It'll be fully charged and then we'll run a discharge cycle and see how it performs. Okay, battery's charged up. We've got our little test unit on here. And I'll get the current meter in place. I'm going to draw, I've got two resistors here in parallel. This is going to draw about 700 milliamps when I plug it in here. There we go, 690 milliamps. We're going to let this thing go. This is going to time out, so the, we're just, the, this is going to shut itself off. We're watching our voltage here. It says 20.03 because this has been running for a couple of minutes already. But anyway, um, I'm going to let this thing run until it drops. We'll time lapse this uh, video. So this will give us an idea how long this thing will run drawing 690 milliamps, which is, it's rated at one amp, so I don't want to pull maximum power. But we'll give it, uh, we'll draw about 70% of its rated current. And I've also got the temperature probe here is uh, on the back of the battery here. So we'll be able to monitor the cell temperature. It's taped to the cell itself. So we'll be able to monitor the cell temperature as this thing heats up. So I'm just gonna let this thing uh, do its job here and uh, we'll see how long this thing runs.
Okay, as you can see, it's now stopped. So I guess I can put this thing back together and we'll charge it up again and then we'll uh, see how it uh, works charging a cell phone. But it seems to go a fairly long time into uh, a resistive load. Okay, before I put this thing back, let's look up what some of these ICs are. This uses the MP3401A. Let's take a look and see what that IC is. So an MP3401, that's the switching regulator. It's an SII Semiconductor Corporation. Makes this, it's a CMOS switching regulator. And uh, this is what's used to obviously uh, work the boost converter. The other IC on here is going to be the, where is it here? There'll be some battery protection. I'm just looking on the microscope here to find it. I think that was probably the battery protection here. Let's take, just take a look at this. This is a DW018. And of course, we, uh, if we OK Google that, we we'll see that, oh, a <laughs> stupid phone. Um, it's listening to me. It's a um, lithium ion battery protection IC. So this does have uh, protection on it from overcurrent. And uh, that's probably the charging regulator too, I would think. So yes, this is the charge regulator and discharge regulator. Prevents over discharge and prevents overcharge. Lithium ion cell protection is how it's listed. So let's get some close-ups through my microscope of the board here. I actually can record it on the actual microscope camera itself. But this thing looks to be well made. You know, for four bucks, geez, you can't go wrong. You know, for four bucks on this thing. I don't see any faults whatsoever on that board. Look at the other side. Now this is the side I tacked on for my my uh meter I soldered onto the ter positive terminal down here. But this little module looks great. I have no, I can't see any anything that would sound any alarm bells that this thing isn't going to uh, perform. Soldering looks good. Yeah, I would say that this one here, I think we've got a winner here. For four bucks, you really, you can't go wrong. You know, to have a backup and buy a couple of these things and just keep them stored in your car in case your battery goes dead. Um, you know, for four bucks at the dollar store. That's what they are in Canada, Dollarama. Four bucks. Looks to be a nice little product. Let's put it back together. I think that's a... So I think that's about as fair a test as I can actually make it because, uh, I mean, uh, I did it the same way I tested the other, the RAV Power and the Anchor branded um, units. I think it's a fairly fair test because I gave them a, a fixed resistive load and let the battery completely discharge. I'm just going to stuff this thing back together and then the cover. It's not glued in place or anything on this, it just snaps on and nothing breaks taking this thing apart. So just snap that on like that and the cover is back together. Now we need to plug this thing in and get it charging as I completely discharged it. So I'm just going to charge this up with my Blackberry charger. Just got a regular, it comes with a little short cord which is also kind of nice for, you know, for traveling because you're not carrying around a big cord with you but just plug it in, plug the USB into the USB charge socket, plug the thing in, and the red light starts flashing. I guess I can peel that sticker off now that I know that it only uses an amp to charge, but red light will flash there and it takes about two hours to charge up. Uh, that's it. That's all she wrote. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.